Hey friends, welcome back, I hope you're well. Uh, there's no food for you today, apologies. I'm gonna have a little day spending on Myrtle the van, trying to get her finished. We're so close. Have I been saying that for months? I feel like I have. She's had her MOT in service, so she is officially legally back on the road. She's amazing, she flew through it, no worries. Considering this van has been sat still for a whole year, it's quite dramatic really, she's amazing. Uh, she was, that was last week, she was back in the garage yesterday having a shiny new cam belt fitted. And please take this as a little nudge if your vehicle possibly needs a cam belt changing anytime soon, go and book it in. Because when I first got her, I kept putting it off and it blew her engine and it cost me £1,200 to get it mended. So please take heed. If you need it doing, go and book it in today and go and get your cam belt changed. It's not worth the tiny saving of putting it off just in case it blows your engine. So uh, I've just got some little bitty jobs in the van to do today. Let's crack on. All right, so I haven't actually shown you around what we've been doing uh, of late and we've had a bit of an empty out. So now would be a good time to show you. Uh, so you've seen the whole solar rig up on the roof. Uh, the inside of the van has been painted. So these cupboards were more whitewashed before. You could see the wood grain, um, but I kind of like it. I think it looks quite fresh and nice. Uh, I've also painted the outside and the inside of the cupboards, which is just a little thing, but I tell you what, it took hell of a long time, man. But it feels really nice that these cupboards are all painted in and out. And then as you come in, in this cupboard here, this is where the fridge is. So if I open this up, this is the fridge here. Uh, I think it's called an apricot. I don't know. I'll pop it on the screen for you. Really pleased with it. Johnny was so pleased with it. He's bought one for his fan too. And it fits in that cupboard like perfectly like this is uh, the wheel arch is under here and you can see how much of a perfect fit it is a little bit tricksy getting it open so johnny's put those two holes there for me so you kind of stick your fingers in there and lift up and bearing in mind once you've got food or drink in there then obviously it's going to weigh it down more so it will open more easily uh, this is the smallest one in the range it's not the one i wanted the one i wanted had a freezer here but it just didn't fit in this cupboard and this did so i figured you know what i can do without a little tiny ice box and to be honest i only wanted the ice so that i could have it in cold brews in the summer so i'm sure i can live without that um yeah really pleased with that that runs off the solar panel obviously uh so that's good let's close that down so i do want to get another coat of paint on all of this today I've also painted the walls. I've got rid of my dodgy feather mural. Uh, so probably another two coats on there to cover all of that up. We're also starting to tongue and groove the ceiling and we've obviously put insulation in. I didn't ever bother with doing the ceiling before because, oh, do I want a pop top? Do I want a roof tan? I didn't know what I wanted. So I just kind of stopped at the end of stage one, but kind of feel that stage two is a lot of fun. I'm really, really glad we're doing it. Uh, we've lost a little bit of storage over this side. This is the switches for the lighting and stuff and all the wires go down through that cupboard and then into the battery and electrics, which is now in there. I've painted the back of those little shelves black because there's like a black pipe going up the back uh, and it looked really ugly. So I thought, let's just paint the inside of them black and then nobody will ever see. Uh, contemplating putting two doors on this part here, one there and obviously one there. Don't know, don't know whether to keep it open or box it in. As you can see, it's not straight. So uh, I've got OCD and I don't know that I can cope with wonky door. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Watch this space. That's not really all that important right now. So that's cool. We can live with that. Um, so yeah, I need Johnny's help with finishing the ton and groove and I've put these lights in here, these long 12 volt lights, a uh, little bit concerned about how bright they're going to be, even though we've got a dimmer switch. So I have ordered some smaller lights, which I think will probably take these ones down uh, and put in the small lights. Don't know yet. I need Johnny's help for, for this and Johnny's off to Scotland for a fortnight at the end of the week. So I've kind of missed the opportunity to get him to do all this stuff now. So I'm just gonna have to live with the ceiling like this for a few more weeks yet, but it has given me lots of time to get the, the decor done. So the first job of today is, oh Leah, let me talk about the floor. 
So up until now, I've had like this lovely whitewashed uh, varnish on here, which I've really liked. Um, it is looking pretty grubby, but then it's gonna, it's been well loved. But because I've decided to stain the table, whereas before it had like a patterned blue wallpaper on it that was varnished. Anyway, I've got that off. That was a hell of a job. And I varnished the table to a nice dark brown to kind of match my mahogany work surface. Uh, so I've decided that I'm going to varnish the floor as well. So the job today is I want to where it's dried out over the years. It's um, all the caulk that we put in originally has all shrunk and it looks really nasty. That actually doesn't look too bad. But this one here, this is massive. Uh, so what I'm going to do today is try and get all of this old crap out and then I'm going to re-caulk it um, and then I'm going to varnish it. And I think that that'll look really pretty. Alrighty, so I reckon I've got out most of the putty that I need to. This gap here is massive. Look at that, it's huge. Uh, yeah, coffee break. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is sand the whole floor back. This is what it looks like when it's sanded. Um, and then I can fill those gaps. And I'm not sure how long that takes to go off. But then I can varnish it, which is kind of cool. Where's my sandpaper gone? Hmm, let's go find some more. There we go. Papa. Oh, that's a bit rough. Let's get a finer one too. Oh, ideal. Jobs are good. So my family have lived on this farm for 43 years, I think. 44 years this September. Uh, I was four when they bought it so that'll give you some clue of how old I am um, but the nice thing is this shed we call it the warehouse it's a very big shed um, it used to be an animal barn uh, when I was a kid we used to have sheep in the bit where I just got the sandpaper from and where you had the chickens over the winter for avian flu but because we've been here so long like you can always find <laughs> what you're looking for and often stuff gets lost. So there's probably about 18 different places where you could probably find a piece of sandpaper in this place. It's hilarious. It's like, oh, do you know what I could really do with a, insert the beep here, and oh, I'll have a look in the warehouse and there'll more than likely, there'll be one or more than one there. It's so funny. I don't know what we're gonna do when we live in a van and we haven't got a warehouse to depend on. I mean, goodness, all five freezers, what am I gonna do? <laughs> We're going to have to start becoming a minimalist, which is kind of fun, actually. And I have already got rid of a ton of stuff. I've made over 500 quid on eBay over the last probably five weeks, maybe six, which is kind of nice. You don't realise how much rubbish you own until you're kind of thinking, oh, I want to move. And especially I want to move into a tiny weeny little van. And I've been into camping since I was a kid. So I think I've currently got three tents, which I haven't quite got round to getting them out and put up and photographed and sold. Uh, one of them is called the Manor House. And when I turned 30, I couldn't be doing with that whole, you know when you've got a little dome tent? Hang on, where's my coffee? I need coffee guys. You know when you've got a little dome tent and you're camping in England and generally it's gonna chuck it down with rain and you can't touch the sides of your tent because if you do, the water will come in. So when I got to 30, I'm like, you know, <laughs> I'm too old now. I can't be doing with that whole tiny tent thing. Uh, so then I upgraded to the manor house. The manor house, it's a monster tent. It is beautiful and I freaking love this tent. It's seven foot tall and it's at its longest, if you put the like, the little extension gazebo on the end, it's 17 foot long and it's got a 
two bedrooms or one big bedroom at one end and then it's got a massive like loungy cooking bit which you can either have as grass or you can put a tarp down it's like it's the dream tent I love this thing but when am I ever gonna want to camp in a tent again like I've upgraded in life I'm a camper van girl so I can't see me ever going back to tents and if I decided one day that oh, I really need to go tent camping again I'd probably get one of those air beams and not have the big heavy bag of poles to deal with so yeah it's all going all going I'm getting rid of it all it's lovely I'm becoming a minimalist right stop chatting Jane start sanding So I've just taken a little break from the myrtle. It's just started hoofing down outside as well. I'm just gonna knock up a quick sweet potato curry using some Penang curry paste, which is really yummy. Uh, and yeah, Johnny will be home in about 45 minutes. So I want him a nice bowl of curry ready for him when he gets back. So in here we've got uh, sweet potato, spinach, peas, onion, lemongrass, garlic, ginger, uh, mushroom, uh, um, green pepper, mm, can't remember what else, oh coconut milk and obviously uh, Penang curry paste. Mmm, mmm, so good. Right, lunchtime over, let's get back to work. Oh God, it's really cold. Where's my coat? Ah, I've just run out. Damn it. Hopefully the magical warehouse has more masking tape, but I'm actually not feeling positive about that because I think I think this might be the last roll. Keep your fingers crossed. Well, that's a no to the masking tape, but I think there's a little bit of sellotape left on this roll. But it's only to stop the caulk from stop sticking to the plank, so I figure this will do the job. apply if rainy or frosty weather I guess we just like go for it right what's the worst that can happen Johnny told me I needed a little bowl of water so that I can smooth it out with a wet finger so do you want to come and watch me make a mess of my floor oh 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 hello and we're off now I guess it's better for me to go slowly. Things like this I tend to rush and screw them up. So let's see what happens if we can be quite tidy about it all. Well, this is quite therapeutic. Right, I just wanna have a little go with the water and see how much I actually need to be using. I definitely need to go and find a rag for this job, I think. Just realised I've started right in front of the door, which was really silly. I should have started at the back, furthest away from the door. So A, I can learn my craft without it showing in the doorway, but also then I can work backwards towards the door. There you go. If you ever need to do caulking on your van floor, then learn from my mistake, huh?
you know, a teaspoon has become one of the most useful tools in this whole little refurb. It's so funny. I use this thing for everything. It's definitely my tool of choice for opening tins of paint. Talking of which, I think because now it's hoofing down out there and I can't really tread on that floor now until that has all gone off. So I think I'm going to go to the back of the van and give that little lot another coat of paint. Is that the best thing I can be doing right now? Oh, and in case you were wondering, we use um, a garden fence paint because it sticks really well to wood. It doesn't matter if it were to get wet. It's really hard wearing. It does take probably about three good coats to really cover up and get that depth of colour that you really want. Um, but it's good. And this is the same stuff that we used on our kitchen in the house as well. So our kitchen is also made of pallets. And it was Johnny's idea at the start to use this paint and we both really, really like it. Well, it hasn't stopped raining and Johnny has finished work early, which is rather nice. So he's got some painting to do inside Sprout. And have I already told you? I can't remember. He's off to Scotland on Saturday for two weeks. <laughs> I'm getting so envious and I'm going to be so lonely. He's driving over to the southeast of England first to pick up his son, Kieran. Hey, Keepy. And then they're going to toodle on up to Scotland and they're going to go and climb some mountains and all that kind of stuff which sounds fun. So he's got some painting to do inside his van and he's just told me that A, my floor looks lovely, which we knew, um, but also B, I've been waiting for the cork stuff to go off and he says it'll be fine to varnish over now. So that's what I'm about to do. Right, change of plan. The, uh, what's it called? Cork stuff hasn't gone off at all and I've just got it all over my hands. So I'm actually gonna run out to the shop and get some trim stuff. What are we calling it? Architrive, because I'm going to put a map up on probably that wall or maybe this wall. I'm not entirely sure which one yet. Uh, and I've got some like plastic to put over the mat so it doesn't get damaged. And I want to trim it with that stuff. Uh, so I'm going to pop out and get that and pick up some more masking tape and maybe get a coffee while I'm out, possibly. So this gack in the floor is still wet and it's been like hours now. So I think I'm going to put the diesel heater on. And for all of you that don't have a diesel heater in your van, I need to introduce you to the £100 cheapest chips, Chinese imported diesel heater. Oh my God, they're amazing. And I cannot believe that I didn't put one in right from day one. All right, so in this cupboard, we have to open this one up. And this is my, those are my little storage pots. This is my kill switch, so that is now oh, on. See the little green bit there, and it turns the electrics on. And then this is the mothership that goes with the diesel heater, and you just press that, and it takes a little bit of time to zhuzh up. So cold air is now blowing out that little vent. It takes a few minutes, and then that will be nice and warm. We've had loads of deliveries today keeping Mr. Amazon busy. So one of the deliveries was my new lights. These are just the regular LED lights that, oh, I thought I ordered white. These are silver. I don't suppose it matters in the slightest. And this little kit comes with six lights, all the wiring, a little mm, pluggy box. We'll call that a pluggy box. Oops, and a little remote control, and in there, I think there's also a dimmer switch. So that'll be good to get them in. Um, but that won't be until Johnny gets back from Scotland now because I am not touching wiring. You'll be glad to know. I don't think that would be a good idea at all. Uh, so Johnny is away for a fortnight, and whilst he's away, I'm going camping too, only in Cornwall, not as exotic as Johnny. Um, but oh my goodness, I'm so looking forward to it. Right, I'm gonna call it a day for now. Um, I think I'm gonna pick this up tomorrow though. So until then, sleep tight. <laughs>
Good morning. Uh, I forgot to check the time on my phone before I started filming. I think it's about 20 past six in the morning. <laughs> I'm an early bird, I'm up at this time anyway. Uh, as you can see, I'm still looking a little bit sleepy. So I was thinking last night as I was nodding off to bed that today in the morning we could either varnish the floors as promised yesterday or we could go out for breakfast and seeing as I haven't had Myrtle for a whole year to do something like this I thought you know what sod it let's go out for breakfast <laughs> uh, we're going to the coast so I'll see you there well that should do her huh? what a gorgeous spot for breakfast that's Lou Island over there so I'm currently sat on Hannafor so this lovely long road which is free to park on you can't camp overnight and then that way is the little town of Lou and that way is Devon gosh that's a moody sky huh right let's get breakfast on so first of all let me clear that up I threw one little cushion in the car um, we're like, we're, we, she hasn't been used for a year. What can you expect? Let's chuck it all in there. And this job I'm not looking forward to, but I need to get the gas bottle back into the new gas locker. And this is not easy. So wish me luck because I can't even make a cup of coffee until that is in there. I have no idea how to do this. Oh my God, this is going to be a pain in the but I'm to change this every time. Okay, maybe I need to put the bottle in there. Oh, it's caught on the pipe and the valve, I see. Oh, maybe it's caught. Okay, let's get that out of the way. Holy moly, and now it's catching on that little plastic thing. Let's get that out. Lovely people, you do realise I could have just stuck the electric kettle on at home <laughs> and I could have been sat there drinking coffee by now. But oh no, I need to make you lot a lovely video. Ah, right. Yes, we're in. Oh my god, this is a bloody nightmare, people. Am I even going the right way? Is that the problem? Let's try that way. Ah, I was going, oh no, maybe. No, I think I was going the right way. Oh, let's try that way again. Right, there we are, that's on. Appears that this latch, oh, there it is, I've done it, had stuck. I think that's done it. Yes. Who needs a gym? Just got a Volkswagen camper van. How exciting. Look at me with my gas clicky clicker. How pretty is that? I might need to take a little photo for Instagram because they're so pretty. I brought an egg, but I didn't put it in an egg box and it has cracked, but luckily it hasn't gone everywhere. So that's good. Right, first of all, we're gonna make toast. I've got a little bit of gluten-free bread here. Let's chuck that in. Like literally still in a building site. Do you know what? On the drive here, actually every time I've driven Myrtle since getting her back on the road, I find that I'm grinning like an absolute twit. It's so funny. I've never had a car that's given me the kind of buzz that this van has given me to drive. And I don't know if it's this van specifically or if it's just having a camper van for a car, like being able to drive somewhere like this and put the kettle on and make some toast and fry an egg like... It, it sounds so silly, but it's such a lovely feeling. 
Oh my gosh. If any of you lot are camper vanners, let me know down in the comments. This is the normal feeling, right? It's just so freaking cool. Oh, God, I love coffee. Oh, look at me, a bit of toast. How scrummy that looking. Just remembered I did all this on the floor yesterday. It's a very strange colour, but when the wood is varnished that colour, hopefully it won't show quite so much. Right, toast complete. Let's turn that heat right down. And then today I am cooking with ghee. <laughs> it's geezy. I don't have a proper spatula. All I've got is this funny little silicon thing. So I think I need quite a lot of fat because I need that egg to slip slide around in there. And then in here, I've got a mix of seeds and nutritional yeast. Um, obviously, I'm not vegan. I'm eating an egg. Uh, but I just really like nutritional yeast with egg. It tastes, tastes so yummy. Oh, that's quite a lot. Ooh, what's going on here? In case you're wondering, it is now 13 minutes past seven in the morning. That's the first car that's gone past me. But I've had loads of dog walkers and joggers out. And then to finish it all off, I'm going to add some steak seasoning too. Steak seasoning on eggs is just the best. And breakfast is served. <laughs> Right lovelies, that's it for today's video I reckon. I now need to get home and edit this video <laughs> and then go and varnish the floors. But thank you for joining me and I'm really glad you guys could come along on my first proper little adventure in Myrtle. Breakfast at the beach, just lovely. So I do hope you've enjoyed today's video um, and if you did please wallop the thumbs up and feel free to subscribe if you want to kind of carry on watching our adventures of getting Myrtle finished and then getting started on the new van Noodle and getting that pimped and ready for full-time van life. So exciting, oh my goodness. After a year of being stuck indoors, it's like I am ready to explode with adventure. So exciting. Anyway, as always, please keep smiling, stay safe and I'll catch up with you next week. Mwah. Peace.